so they are sharing something in common. So we just talk about straight line today. So a family of graphs has at least one character in common. So at least one thing. They can have two things in common or like more than one thing. So if we just talk about the straight lines, there will be two things they can have share in common. The first one is they all parallel to each other. They have the same gradient. Okay, they have the same gradient. So there are only two types, okay? So the first type is they are parallel to each other. That's the gradient are the same. The second thing, number two, is they are passing through the same point. Okay, they are passing through the same point. Okay, if they are passing through the same point, okay, if you think in this way, there will be more than one point they can pass through. For example, the most obvious one is y-intercepts. If they all share the same y-intercept, not necessarily always intercept. They can share any points in common, but it's very typical to say we have the same y-intercept. Why is very typical? Because I can write a family function as um, y, like this y-intercept is 0, 3. Okay, if you can read that, that's 0, 3. So I can write all of these graphs in the form of mx plus 3. Okay, so when m change, the graph rotate, but they all rotate about the point zero three. So for example, in that case, the common thing is the y-intercept, which is zero three, and then all got different gradients. So I can say that's mx plus three. When you change the m, like you find different functions, but it's all rotating about that point. Let's have a think about the same gradient one. Uh, can you find the gradient for me first for this graph? If you can't read it clearly, that point is 3, 2, and that point is 2, 0. Okay. They are all the same gradient. They all have the same gradient. So for the right-hand side graph, you pass a point 3, 2, and the other point is 2, 0. Can you find the gradient for me first? Okay, you should find a gradient which is 2. So it is 2 for all this linear. Okay, 2 for all this linear. So the family of graph we can write in the form of 2x plus c, which c can change. When c change, which means the graph shift up or down. Okay, shift up or down. So this is a family of graph. They all have the same gradient. The gradient is two. I can say from here, the gradient is two. And then change the C value, which means changing the C uh, Y intercept. And we all get the different graph, but they're all parallel to each other. Those two are the easy one. Okay, those two are the easy one. Let's have a think about other special ones. For example, this one. Okay, for example, this one. Um, we have negative 4, 0 is the x-intercept. All of this linear pass through the x, same x-intercept. Okay, that's a special point as well. They all pass through the same x-intercept, which is minus 4, comma 0. Yeah, another case, like C is another case we talk about, they pass through any other points, like they are not special anymore. So we can go like... Uh, uh. Okay, there are family of graphs as well. They all pass through one point, let's say that point is 2, 2. This is a family of graph as well. But the hard thing is, I can't use one equation to represent them all out. I can, but like it's much harder than this. So I have the same gradient, same y intercept, it's easy to write. So for a general point, I don't really think about that. Do not consider in this chapter. But let's think about the x intercept. That's a special point. How you can use a similar equation like those two to represent all this family out? Can you have a try? Like, have a think about it. What you can do. Uh, that, that, so 
that one is got different wine to set same ingredient and that one you can see we all have the same wine to set but different ingredient but now i have another graph they all pass through the same x intercept what kind of equation i can have to say oh this is a family of function and then they all pass through the point negative four zero um give you a hint it will be the equation giving you the gradient and give you another point you already know another point like this four you can try this equation in 2c okay you can try that equation in 2c This one is an easy one. I will introduce another one later, but trying to use this equation to write something first. You know what we write in this way. This is a linear equation, right? This is a linear equation. So we are writing about linear equations. I know a point passing through the graph. Uh, no, sorry, a graph passes through a point, and then I don't know the gradient because what is changing is the gradient. That's like rotating about the x-intercept. So what's x1, y1? Let's back to here. There's always a variable changing. Can you see in the family of function, there always be something unknown because that's the thing. You change that number, that letter, like say, change m to 2, we got this function we change m to 1 we got this function that's why we have a variable there so we need to have a variable here in this equation as well so what I don't know what I'm not sure about is the gradient okay I don't know the gradient because they're all different gradient but what I can make sure is it must pass through the point negative 4 0 so what I can write is y minus y1 the y1 is 0 it's a definite point on this graph e equals to Gradient, I don't know the gradient because it's all different in different graphs. And x minus x1. So x1, what is x1? Negative 4. So I will minus negative 4 here. Okay, so minus negative 4 here. So overall, I can write y equals to m bracket x plus 4. You can see that's definitely... A linear equation okay that's definitely a linear equation well in the bracket doesn't matter you can expand it so different gradient but it must pass through the point negative four zero because whenever you like doesn't matter what is your m if you sub x equals to negative four into this equation you will definitely get y equals to zero so all the graph all the graphs will pass through the point negative four zero so that's an important equation so that's how we can write family of functions for the graph all passing through the x-intercept okay that's one way there's another way introduced in book which i don't really like it because i think it's hard to think about it so i will write in this way okay let's think about this in this graph, okay, n is the variable. n is the thing like we change n, we ch rotate the graph, okay, about the point negative four zero. Let's think about why we write in this way. What's the reason? First of all, do you think that's a linear function? Do you think that's a linear? In what form? Like mx plus c form? What's the other form? Like linear. You know, like y equals mx plus c, you definitely know that's a linear. What other form you know? A, yep, yeah. ax plus b, thank you, by equals to whatever, uh, not necessarily zero, like can be any number, like mn, like any number. So ax plus by equals to something, equals to a constant, that will be a linear form as well. Yeah, that will be a linear form as well. So this equation, okay, this equation, I can re rewrite it in a way minus a quarter x plus one on ny equals to one. Okay, if I can rewrite that into this form, 
I can see, oh, it's definitely a linear because we have the linear equation above. Okay, first of all, I can make sure that's a linear. Okay, second thing is I want to test, do we always have negative 4, 0 pass through that point? Okay, so which means if we substitute negative 4, 0 into the function, is that always true? Okay, whether the function will always hold this like e equality. So let's try to sub negative 4. Like, okay, let's sub x equals to negative 4, y equals to 0 into that function. So left hand side, we have negative 4 over negative 4 plus 0 over n. That equals to 1. Yep. In the equation of x plus dy equals n, yep. is m any number or is it the Any same? number, any constant. So it's not a gradient? Not agree. Uh, uh, better not to use n then. Let's use n. Any number. Or I don't want to use c because c is represent the y-intercept. So shouldn't choose n. So any letter, any number. Uh, 0, 1, 1.5, all good. So we put in left hand side. Left hand side, I put negative 4, 0 in. I got 1. So what's my right hand side? My right hand side always equals to 1. Which means negative 4, 0 can be always put onto this equation, regardless what is the value of n. Okay, regardless what's the value of n. Why I don't care about the value of n? Because y equals to zero. Okay, y equals to zero. Zero divided by anything will be zero. So what I care about is only the first component, negative four divided by negative four. That will give me one. Okay, that will give me one. So that's the reason. First, I can make sure that is a linear. Okay, second, I can try to sub that point in, and I know that it's always hold, okay, that always hold. So it is true, always true for negative four zero. So that's why, that's the book given us, okay, that's the book. Book give us this equation. So that's the family of function for all the linears pass through the same x-intercept. So it's not always negative four here. It's not always negative four here. This is the x-intercept. So whatever is the x-intercept, you put below the x. So x divided by the x-intercept plus y divided by n. So n is just like the value you can change it. Okay, so you change n, you rotate the graph. So that's the n value. And this one is a fixed value. Why it is a fixed value? Because if you have you sub the x-intercept and you divide the x-intercept, you must have one on the right-hand side. Okay, that's why it's always a one in this case. Okay, in this case. So that's the reason. I don't really like this equation because it needs a lot of explanations there. It's very straightforward for this equation, okay? It's very straightforward for this equation using the uh, m and x1, y1 formula. But in the book, it gives us that you better understand what that means, okay? It's a linear equation and it passes through that point. Yes? Sorry, I don't really understand why it's a y equals to 1. Okay, so what you want to do is when you want to substitute that point, okay, into the equation, you want the equation to be true. Okay, you want both sides equal, right? If it's an equal, which means the point is not on the graph, right? Yeah. yeah. So this part, we put x-intercept because that shows what is our x-intercept. And think about that. You sub x equals to the x-intercept into this graph, right? You want to test whether it is on the graph or not. You sub that in this place. This divide by itself, what that equals to? One. one. So it must be one here. It can't be two. If it's two, but when you sub in, it's wrong then. Yeah? Yeah. Because it can't be two. If it's two, which means negative four sub in, something is wrong. OK? So regardless of that, you just want that's negative 4, that's 0, always equals to the right-hand side. So how it can always equal to the right-hand side can only be 1. So you always sub in the x-intercept? Why we always sub into x-intercept? Because x-intercept is the only point always on those graphs. It's not necessarily other points. So only you want to make sure that point is on the graph. Okay. Don't want to confuse you. This point not necessarily always be x in the set, but let's make it easy, straightforward. We can directly see it. I want that to be x in the set. You can see the question below later. 
it's not always x intercept. Okay, so this is the easiest way we can write it. Y is always one because we make here x intercept. When we sub x intercept, divide by itself, I want to achieve one. Okay, that's the reason. That's the reason. This is not really that it's not really quite logical. So for me, it's like I see it, I can explain it backwards. But if ask me to think about it, I will think about like the other way I'm introduced. Okay? Yeah? So are you saying that that equation doesn't always equal zero only when you sub in six? Which, which equation? I mean, it doesn't always equal zero. Okay, this equation is a linear equation. Okay, this one doesn't mean anything. Yeah. This equation, if you can put it back into the form y equals mx plus c, you can see this one is nothing. Okay, it's not y intercept, it's not x intercept, it's not the gradient. So this is just a number to make this equation to be true. So what all I want to do is write a family function. Okay, first of all, it needs to be a linear equation. So this is a linear equation. Doesn't matter this is one or two or three, it's always a linear equation. Secondly, I want to make the equation true when I substitute negative four and zero. I don't care about other points, I just care about this point. When I sub that point in, I want this equation to be true. So what value I need? I need one. Okay, I need one. That's like, this value is what I need. I just need one, so I put one there. If I need two, I will put two there, but that's another story because I already put x in the set here. Okay? That's all, x is always going to be over, over x in the set. Intercept. Yeah, that's you write that. Like, I'll ask you to write a family function for me. Can you, so, can you switch? Can you put x over x plus y over No, 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 because it's the x intercept. It's not the y intercept. But it's the graph. The graph passed through the y intercept. Oh, yes, you can do the same. Like, n here and y intercept but you here. Wouldn't need to you wouldn't need to. You have the other form, which is easy to write. Yes? Okay, so that's the family of graph. Basically, we talk about three things. Two are very, very easy. You don't, if you really can't get it, just don't worry about it because it's not going to be directly test you that. You can't use that one I'm introducing, okay? That one, the bottom one. So that's good enough as well. So y minus y1 equals to m equal times x minus x1. So basically, we talk about three family of functions. One is all parallel. One is passing through the y-intercept. Those two are very easy to write. And the third one is passing through the x-intercept. I'm introducing two ways to write it. One way is use y minus y1 equals to gradient times x minus x1. The other one is the book method. Okay, x over x intercept plus y over n equals to 1. So you can memorize it if you want. Okay, that's the two ways to talk about it. Um, but you can see the question is not really connect with that. Let's, let's have a look at this question. Uh, let's do example two. Okay, example one I think is easier. Let's do example two. So for example two, a family of lines have the equation of that form. Can you see this form is very similar to what we have before? Okay, but it's not equals to one. As I said, it's not necessary one. This is just a linear equation. Also, a is below the x. It's not necessary means um, it's not passing through the x-intercept. This question, I'll tell you, it passed through the y-intercept. Okay, it passed through the y-intercept. So what I want you to do is find the x-intercept. Okay, give you the equation. You know that's a linear, and you know a is not going to be 0. Now I'll ask you to find the x-axis intercept of a line in this family in terms of a. So let's find the x-intercept. The only way to find x-intercept is make y equals to 0. Okay, the only way, it doesn't matter what equation you have. If I ask you to find x-intercept, it's always make y equals to 0 and solve for x. So x-intercept, when y equals to 0.
Okay, when you finish, you can check your answer here. In terms of a means x equals to some a, okay, x equals to some a. Make a to be the subject is a equals to something. Okay, I find students confused with that last year. One is make something in terms of a, and one is make a to be the subject. Those two are quite important. So, x intercept is always make y equals to zero and solve for x. Okay, that's the way we can do it. Yep. So, you know how you said that it's not all, so the x intercept can't straight away say it's a, it's y. It's, it's not. Like, like if yeah. it's the x intercept, you will have numbers down there. It's not yeah. numbers at all. But if you have an x intercept, yep. you automatically put it underneath the x as the denominator. You can for uh, if it's only talk about family functions. If you have like a graph, uh, all passing through this point, okay. So that point is three zero. So the family of graph I can write is x over three plus y over n equals to one. Okay, but yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. but you can't straight away say that. No, no, no. You can't. You can't. You can't. You must satisfy right hand side is one and there's a number down x. Okay, only oh, if satisfy it's that. Not, oh, it's not one on no, it's not one on that side, it's oh. four, it's not one, so it can't work in that way. Okay, so that's find y intercept. Next one is find gradient. What's the best way to find gradient for this question? What's the best way to find gradient for a linear? Yes? Yes, good. So the best way to do it is that's not in terms of y. Uh, not in, uh, y is not the subject. I need to put y into the subject in the form of mx plus c. And then I can see what is the gradient. The m, the number in front of x, it must be the gradient. So I need to rearrange this graph. Okay, I need to rearrange this graph. Gradient is 12 over A. How do you rearrange it? You want to solve for Y. We need to get rid of the denominator first. Well, why I don't get rid of the denominator for A? Because A is a number. Like, I want to make Y to be the subject. You need to know what I want to solve for. I want to solve for Y. So first of all, I want to separate Y into the other side. Okay, separate Y first. And then I got a denominator for y. Because if I just times 12, that's a single y already. So I just times 12 on everything. So this will be 12x over a. I would like to write it separately for x and for the number. So it's 12 over a times x. Because that's exactly the form mx plus c. Okay, mx plus c. So I know my gradient is 12 over a, and I know my y intercept is negative 48. Okay, so that form is clear. That form is clear. So question three is quite easy to do. Find the value of a if the gradient equals to negative two. So gradient equals to negative two gives you that 12 over a equals to negative two and a equals to negative six. A equals to negative six.
Okay, that's the type of question giving you in the textbook. So still have quite a lot of time left. I want you to do some exercise for me. Okay, so 2E is a revision. Just remember to try this question. That's a revision question as well. So I'm not going to go through that. I will give you the answer directly later. Um, we start from 2F today. So we have done page 6. We have done half of page 7. So I want you to use the time now to do example 1 and example 3. I think example uh, 3 is quite challenging. Okay, example 1 and example 3. Uh, 2G is a revision exercise as well. Okay, 2G is a revision exercise. I don't really need to go through 2G. So you find some time to try that question. We'll start 2H tomorrow. But I want you to do question 1 and question 3. And if you finish, uh, we can check answer later together. I'll give you 18 minutes. We'll start on 12. Okay, give you 18 minutes to try those two questions. A family of lines have equations of form y equals mx plus 2. So this is a family function passing through the same y-intercept, which is 0, 2. Where m is a negative number. Okay, let's remember that. m is a negative number. So use mathematical representation. When you see something in words, don't, just don't leave it there. So that thing means m less than 0. Let's write that out. Okay, otherwise you forget. Otherwise you forget. That's why I said example two, most of you will get that wrong. One, find the x axis intercept in, uh, of a line in this family in terms of f. This is easy. If asked you to find x intercept, the first one must be make y equals to zero. So if y equals to zero, zero equals to mx plus two. You need to solve for x. So minus mx equals to two, x equals to minus 2 over m. So minus 2 over m, comma 0 will be the x intercept. Okay, that one is easy. Find what x intercept you will make y equals to 0, sub into the equation and solve for x. So you will have x equals to minus 2 over m. I think most of you have no problem with that. Let's have a look at example uh, question 2. Question 2 says, for which values of m is the x-axis intercept greater than 3? So you want the x-axis intercept to be greater than 3. Okay, what's our x-axis intercept? Minus 2 over m. Okay, minus 2 over m is our x-intercept. I want that to be greater than 3. Okay, so I want to solve for m. I want to solve for m. First of all, let's get rid of the negative. Like, I really don't want the negative there. So, when times the negative, sign will swap. That's what we will have. Okay. Next thing is, if you have denominator, I must get rid of the denominator. I will times m on both sides. Okay, I will times m on both sides. So, that's 2. That's minus 3m. What will be the inequality sign? Greater or larger? A uh, smaller, smaller or larger? What will be the inequality sign? Now, who thinks it's smaller? Anyone think it's larger? Okay. If like the previous line is smaller, okay. In which case the sign will swap? Like for inequality. In which case it was swapped? Negative. negative. Okay, divide or times by negative. Okay, what I have time? I have time m, right? On both sides. m is positive or negative? Do we need to swap the sign? Yes. So we need to swap the sign now. So this sign will swap to that way. Does that make sense? That's why I said that's very important. m is negative. So I need to care about that because Oh, well, I can't say all. 90% of the information is relevant to the question. It's nothing just give you for fun. Okay, just sit there and 
you don't use them. 90% of the information is very helpful, especially for negative positive numbers. They are important. You will use it later. So that's negative. When you times it, we need to swap the sign. And then I need to divide by negative 3. Uh, sign will swap again back to that. So M will be greater than that, but don't forget your M also needs to be less than zero. Okay, also needs to be less than zero. So overall your M will be in that domain. In in that value. Okay, in that part. Because don't forget we have M less than zero here as well. So the restriction needs to restrict in two from two ways okay one is in the question and the other one is greater than three that's why i said it's a really tricky question this one okay so i have here and i have here combine them combine them i have negative two on three to zero Any questions for that one? This is a really good question. That's what question you have in VC. Not, not that's that easy, okay, solving for that. But that's the tricky part you will have in VC exam. They will give you something, oh, something negative in the equation. Or say, that's a function, give you, like, at the back it says, oh, x only belongs to 1, 2, 3. So that's the tricky part. You need to read the question carefully and highlight necessary part like that. Okay, so number three will be, uh, all right, so only two is harder. So find the equation of the line perpendicular to this line at the point zero two, at the point zero two. So this is a family of graphs, okay? So whatever, I will pass through the point zero two. So uh, I will draw another one, which is like this. So I want to find a perpendicular graph. So it will still pass through the same point, but they are perpendicular to each other. You don't really need to sketch for it. What I want to show you is the new graph is still passed through the same y-intercept. It still has 0, 2 as the y-intercept. But you don't know what is m. But you know perpendicular is the negative reciprocal value. So it's negative 1 over the original gradient. The original gradient is m. So the negative reciprocal will be negative 1 over m. That's the gradient. Gradient times x plus the y-intercept will be the equation. So minus 1 over m is the gradient for the red curve. Why with m? Because I don't know what's the gradient. It's a family of function. I don't know what is the real number, but I will put in minus 1 over m times x. So gradient times x plus y-intercept. So y-intercept is still 2. Okay, so plus 2 there. Any questions? If we don't have any question, let's go to example three. So for example three, uh, I think two of you has, uh, have asked me like, do you think the information in number one can be used in number two? No, okay, the answer is no. In EVC exam, it's no. Part A is not used for part B, okay? Part B is not used for part C. Only the main question can be applied to each individual question. Unless the question write in this way, okay? Blah, 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 let's say it's the main question. And we have part A, uh, part B, something, something. And then have a new line, say, give you some new information here, okay? Some new information. And then say part C, part D, part E then C, D, E can use all of this new information here. But A, B, C, D, E is not affecting each other, okay? It's all like different questions. So don't think about the information in other 
pass. Only the main question, all the additional information, those ones can be used. Okay, those ones can be used. For example, the midpoint M is three points, uh, three comma six. It's not three comma six in the next question. Okay, it's not three comma six in the next question. So forget about it. That's only work for part A. So that's the important thing you need to know before you do that question. So for this one, a family of lines has equation of form y equals to minus 2x plus c. This one is parallel graph. Okay, they all have the same gradient, which is negative 2. They all have different y, uh, y intercept. They move up or down. Where c is a positive number. Okay, c is a positive number. So c will be greater than 0. So if c is a positive number, you graph can only look in this way. Okay, so it's not going to look in this way. Which means what c greater than 0 gives you is positive xy intercept. Okay, so what you can do, like last question, m less than 0 is so for inequality. What this one gives us? This one gives us we have both x, y, inter positive x, y intercept, if you sketch a graph, because it's not going to be like that. So this one will give you both negative, but that one will give you both positive. So I know I will have both positive x and y intercept. That's the information we get. Yes? Um, the line that were into the negative. Negative. Negative 2. Um, it's a decreasing yeah. graph. Decreasing graph. It's not going to be like that. So, uh, all donate the origin, so let's label it, that's the origin. And let A and B be the X and Y axis intercept separately. So that's A, A is the X intercept, B is the Y intercept, so X, Y intercept. Find the value of C if the midpoint M of the line segment A, B is 3, 6. So first of all, what is A, what is B? Can you write A and B in the coordinates form? I give you a hint, B is easy, B is 0, C. Even though I don't know what is C, I know C must be the y-intercept. So 0, C will be the y-intercept. So what is A? Let's go for in terms of C. I can't find a number because C is unknown. So in terms of C, what is the coordinates of A? C over 2, 0, right? C over 2, 0. C over 2, 0, how do we solve for that? Make y equals to 0, 2x plus c, 2x equals to c, x equals to c over 2. That's how we find the x-intercept. Okay, make y to be 0. How do we find x-intercept? Make y to be 0. Therefore, what is M? M is the midpoint. Okay, what is the midpoint? Here is the midpoint M. So in terms of C, well, I know that's 3, 6, but I want to connect that, relate that to C. So for the X value, so it's C over 2 plus 0 over 2, comma, C plus 0 over 2. That's in terms of C how I can represent M. Because I know A, I know B. What is M? M is average the X value and average the Y value. So M is C over 4, comma C over 2. Therefore, also I know that's 3, comma 6. So C over 4 must be 3, and C over 2 must be 6. Therefore, C is 12. Therefore, C is 12. I need to, like, yes, I know the value. But what I need to do is connect C with that value. How we can relate that is use, uh, in terms of C, let's write M. So M is C over 4 and C over 2. And then I can find the value of C. For the next one, number 2. Yes? 
You would get say this twelve if you subbed in three uh if you subbed in three into five and negative twelve. Yes, yeah. you can do that as well. You can do that as well. If I do that, it's easier for the next question. But yes, you can do that because that's a point on the, in the linear. You can do it. That's another way of doing it. Okay, so what's all this talk about is let's substitute 3, 6 because 3, 6 is another point on this linear as well. If you sub x equals to 3 and y equals to 6, I can work out c as well. Okay, by substitution. That's another way. So the good thing about like that might be an easier way for question one, but for question two, I still need the information for the point A and the point B. So it's easier to start from here, but both ways correct. So number two, I would say the triangle area AOB, which is this area. Okay, now I know, let's label M. M is C over four and C over two. That's the M from part, uh, part one, it's here. I'm not using the information 3 comma 6. I just like generally M will be that point. Number two, I want to find the area. Area is half time height base times height. Okay, half base times height. So it's a half times C over 2 times C over uh, no C over 2 and times C. And that is the area. Area equals to 4. Area equals to 4. Okay, this one is quite easy to understand. It's this triangle, and this triangle got C over 2 and C as base and height. Half base times height is the area. We got 4. So C squared equals to 16. C equals to plus minus 4. We must write it out. Okay. Mathematically, c squared equals to 16. c will be positive or negative 4. Okay? I know c is positive, but in this step, I must write it out. And then reject one. And then reject one. So, because c is greater than 0 or positive, so c equals to 4. Okay, so c equals to 4. Okay, for OM, because I already know what is M. Okay, number three, I want to find the length of OM. I know the length of OM. Now I want to connect C and OM together. So OM, M is C over 4 and C over 2. And the O is the origin, 0, 0. If you know the length formula for OM, OM equals to square root C over 4 minus 0 squared plus C over 2 minus 0 squared. So OM equals to C squared over 16 plus C squared over 4. And then square root that. This is 4c squared over 16. So what I will have is OM equals to 5c squared over 16 square root. And the value give us is 2 root 5. Okay, that's 2 root 5. And that's, let's say, root 20. So 5c squared over 16 equals to 20. Well, divide by 5. That's 4. I, I, I just work it out from my brain. So copy that down because I have one minute left. Have a think about it by yourself. If you have a question, we can go through that again tomorrow. C squared is 64, and C is plus minus 8. 
Do I have wrong thing? So C is 8. So again, same as the first one, I write OM in terms of C and then connect that with the number and then just purely solving the equation. Okay, I, I do it quite quick for the last one. You can redo that by yourself. It's the same idea as the first one or the second one. Which step? How did you get C over 4? Squared. C over 2 squared is C squared over 4. Here? C over 4 or 0 2? That's from the first question. The midpoint. Midpoint. Because A is C over 2, 0. That's C, 0, C. Midpoint will be that. <laughs>